Hello, I'm Andrew Hemming, professional photographer from the UK. And this is the Godox MF12 Macro Flash. It can be mounted onto the front of a camera lens by using one of the filter ring fittings, which just screws straight on. To allow us to mount the MF12, we then use this ring, which just clips on and then Taking the MF12, we just slide that into place and using the two locking buttons, we can reposition anywhere on the ring. The mounting ring will actually hold seven Godox MF12 units. And again, just by simply clicking them on, giving us the typical ring flash arrangement. The MF12 flash can also be used off camera. We have a cold shoe adapter that slides onto the fitting and then gives us a quarter of thread that can then be mounted onto a lighting stand or tripod. The MF12 comes with a filter holder. The filter holder will take one of the supplied colored filters that we can slide on and then just clip into place for color effects. The MF12 also comes with a diffuser that simply clips onto the front of the unit and allows us to spread the light. The MF12 is turned on and the ring is rotated to turn our menu options on. The button at the top allows us to change those options. The bottom button controls the modeling light and the built-in lithium battery is charged through the USB port. For this first photograph, I'm using a single Godox MF12 flash. I'm using a sheet of stone for its textured surface. I've placed it on this box to allow easier positioning of extra lights if needed later. Let's place the ring into position and then I can adjust the camera settings. And using the Godox X Pro controller here in manual mode, I have easy wireless control over the MF12 flash from the camera position. Taking a test photograph, I can determine the correct exposure. To see the effect of the lighting from the MF12, I'm going to use the built-in modeling light. Dialing in the correct exposure, which is 125th of a second to stop any ambient light effect in the photograph, and an aperture of f8. I'll just review the photograph on the screen. The next photograph will have a second MF12 flash as a fill light. I'm sliding the second flash onto the mountain ring and moving it into the 12 o'clock position. The additional flash has a diffuser attached to help soften and spread the light. I will set each flash to a different group. A and C, so I can easily change the lighting ratios between the main and fill light. I now have control over the shadow area on the silver ring. Checking the exposure, we are ready to take the next photo. For the next image, I'm adding a third light. An off-camera MF12, this will add rim lighting to the ring. I'm using a boom arm and attaching the cold shoe adapter, then sliding the flash into position. On the X-Pro controller, I select group B and adjust the power setting. Let's move this flash into the correct location to give the lighting effect needed. A fourth MF12 flash is also used off camera as a backlight. Using a tabletop tripod, I attach the flash using the cold shoe adapter. I've made a few final adjustments and this fourth light adds depth to the image. To change the look of the photograph, I'm going to use one of the colored gels. Here, I'm using the blue gel in the filter holder, which clicks onto the front of the flash. Adding color can totally change the look of an image. To enhance the effect of the color light, I'm going to use water. By spraying the surface of the stone with water, I'll create a stronger reflection with more drama and brighter color. 
I just need to reposition the ring and we are ready. Finally, I'm going to add moving water to the image. I've set the camera to continuous shooting mode and because of the built-in lithium batteries, we can capture multiple images easily. Using a simple water sprayer with a backlighting flash, I can create multiple dramatic images full of movement. I am now going to look at creating a simple cupcake photograph. I don't always need to use a macro lens for close-up photography. So for this image, I'm going to use a standard zoom lens. Using the correct size lens adapter, I attach the flash mounting ring and adjust the position of the flashes. I'm using a Godox V1 as a background light. I will set this flash to a different group so I can adjust its power output easily. I'm adding a blue coloured gel and bouncing this off a white backdrop. I just need to add the cupcake and dress the set with the appropriate props. The MF12 on the side of the mounting ring will be the brighter main light. The second flash at the 12 o'clock position will be the fill light controlling the shadows. The MF12 on the boom arm is adding edge and backlighting. The V1 is hidden behind the box ready to turn the background blue thanks to the coloured gel. I am now all set to capture our cupcake image. Because we have used a zoom lens we can change our focal length and position to create a different perspective and look to the photograph. Flowers are a popular subject for photographers and often a ring flash is a great way to photograph them. Here I am combining seven Godox MF12 flashes and creating a powerful ring flash. We just need to clip them onto the mountain ring and move them into position. I'll be using the T-Tel exposure mode. This is because it's a quicker way of obtaining the correct flash exposure. I will use the flash compensation to allow me to adjust the power output. By using the control dial, I can raise or lower the power of each group. Group B will be on minus three and group A on plus three. This will create modeling on the flowers. I'll split the flashes into two groups so I can set different lighting ratios. I can ensure that the MF12s are set to the correct channels and groups by using the built-in control panel. The flowers are in the correct position and a check of focus which is helped by using the built-in modeling lights. The Godox V1 with its colour gel is pointing straight at the backdrop. I'm changing the colour gel on the V1 so we can quickly alter our white background to a totally different colour. Here I'm using magenta. I can have many different colour backdrops just by using different colours and gels. Just a final check and we have the next image with a totally different colour background.